We are live. Welcome to She-Hulk episode 3, Thoughts. This episode is called The People vs. Emil Blonsky. So, episode 2 left me wanting to see the case with Emil and Wong resolved, and yeah, this episode does that. So, oops. and I really loved this episode's courtroom scenes. You know, we got a very brief one in episode 1. And, you know, episode two didn't have any, but this was worth the wait. It's, you know, I've always been a big fan of courtroom drama and courtroom drama with funny courtroom scenes. You know, Liar Liar is one of my favorite comedies. And this, we haven't quite gotten as wacky as Liar Liar yet, but, you know, there's what, six more, six more episodes. Um, that's what I'm going with. And loved seeing Ms. Marvel in the opening logo. She might have been there before, and I just didn't know. In the, in the first two episodes as well. And let's see. Yeah, so Jen breaks the fourth wall to say it's not a cameo-driven show. I have more thoughts on that, but I'm going to get to them later in this video. Let's see. And yeah, men react on social media negatively towards She-Hulk, the public figure. And that and Dennis in this episode is probably stuff Reactionary is going to flip out over. But yeah, it's, you know, I think it was, uh, I want to say his name is Dan Casey of Nerdist, who pointed out, you know, that's basically, it, they basically just took the actual comments from when She-Hulk was announced you know, what was it he said? Congratulations, you are now canonically douchebags in two different universes. And let's see. Yeah, really loved seeing She Hulk with Dennis. I really hate Dennis, but he's, it's the good, is he's, I love to hate him. You know, he's just so scummy and just, yeah. And I, I really let, you know, She-Hulk she -Hulk had the line, I'd love to know what's going on here and not be part of it. And just, yeah, you know, and and other than, you know, he says, oh, I can't, I can't have She-Hulk as my attorney. And, you know, the guy, the old guy is like, okay, fine. Um, calls in another, I, I forget her name, but, you know, clearly also, you know, that we don't know her. Although, if you the apparently she's in the comics, I haven't read enough. She helped to, but yeah, you know the the old guy trusts her, so that tells me that she must be good. And Dennis is like, oh, you know, she's so hot, she could be my next fiance. And she's like, you know what? I don't. Fine, goodbye. I don't. I do not want to be part of this anyway. And you know, Dennis doesn't even know Pug, but he's you know he's like up oh, th this. He's he's male, so he's got to be good, you know. And and Pug is like, uh, okay, okay, I guess. Poor Pug. And Dennis actually thought he was dating Megan the Stallion, clueless straight man thinking he'd be with any woman. This is the MCU version of a catfish, and I'm here for it. And and the there was that line. I think it was Jen who said, yeah. Dennis would actually think that he could pull Megan the Stallion. Nice wordplay there. I know what you're thinking. I'm not erasing everyone's memories. We'll send him to the mirror dimension. Shadow dimension? Enough with the dimensions. This is not a case that is going to be solved by you using magic. Again. This is a case that was caused by you using magic. And the shapeshifter poses as Dennis trying to drop the case and then poses as Pug. At first I thought that meant that she knocked out Pug, but he runs right to the door, so I, I guess not. But yeah, that was, you know, it, it, was, it was funny. Dennis walking right back in. You know what? Second thoughts. Let's, you know, drop the case. And he only figures out through the, the call. That was actually, right. Spoilers not only for the episode, also for the MCU up to this point. That was also how I want to say it was Fury found out that the the uh, son of Cole Colson, 
the 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 agent Coulson he was with was a scrawl. You know, the the real one called him. I get it's is that just a thing in the MCU? I I mean, there are other ways of revealing that someone has to, whatever, not a big deal. And the seven soulmates are not Thunderbolts. I am surprised. And I, I do really like that, like, Jen has seriously, every single part of Emile's defense, you know, she got character witnesses, and not only Wong, because, you know, Wong is not completely reliable here. She... Smart Hulk really should have given her the contact info because, I mean, again, we still don't know which of them called the other, but somehow there was some communication there for the, the I want to say it was the mid-credits, not post-credits scene of Shang-Chi. So, you know, dude, come on now. You know she's a lawyer. At some point, she might need to do this. Yeah. Anyway, the, the um, what was the other thing? The... Um, yeah, you know, like, she's, oh, you know, if you release him, he already has a specific place he's going to go. He has some specific people that are going to help make sure that he's okay. Um, his job is going to be teaching other people how to not lose control. You know, not that most people are going to turn into a Hulk, but, you know, now that he understands, you know, that's how, that's how he spent time in prison. He learned how to control himself, and now he's going to spread that, you know. And, you know, one of the, the people on the board is like, uh, how is he going to afford? The soulmates are going to provide the money as they have already provided the lot. And, just, yeah. And, yeah, it, it goes well until he hulks out. And, you know, then Jen, not Dennis, thinks of using, you know, putting the smart hulk device, nullifying the powers on him, which leaves the door wide open for Thunderbolts. You know, it's just, they it just got to take the device off. You know, at first I was like, I mean, if they take his powers by, like, removing it, from the, the, uh, yeah, you know, I've, you know, basically the episode had to leave him still with the powers and in control of the powers. And yeah, like him hulking out, you know, he's like, no, no, look, it's, it's fine. Which, I mean, appreciate the, the enthusiasm you know, and he does prove, look, it's complete control over the, yeah. And I really loved Wong. You know, he shows up late and he's like, yes, it was, it was all me, you know. And, and then they're like, you realize you just admitted to a felony, right? And he's like, bye bye And, you know, does the, does the spinny thing that Doctor Strange does a lot? And, you know, jumps through the, the, the portal and it's just... Yeah, you know, that's... Because, I, I mean, at the end of the day, like, how... The wizard... The, the warlock... Sorcerers, there we go. The sorcerers of the MCU don't really... I mean, they don't even follow the natural laws a lot of the time, so why would they go by, you know, the judicial laws? So, yeah, that's... And I love that Pug wins her his case by having Jen point out how pathetic Dennis is, you know, swearing on the on the Bible and everything. And she she's like, oh yeah, yeah, he is that like what was it she said? He's that conceited, he's that entitled. You know, he would think that he could pull Megan Lee Stalin. And after much pressure, Jen agrees to do an interview talking about the whole Hulk thing, and, you know, you have that thing of, like, the guy says, oh, and when we return, she's gonna talk about her exercise and diet, and she's, she's like, wait, what? You know, I didn't agree to that, but that's, you know, if you, if you're known and partially defined by something about your body, you know, people are gonna pressure you to do an interview where you reveal how did you get that body, you know, she, 
she's a lawyer. She's not like if if she was a bodybuilder, you know, look like if they ask like Dwayne the Rock Johnson or you know I I'm not sure I know anybody else. Uh, uh, John Cena, I guess. I'm not. I'm not a wrestling person. I do enjoy the Charmed episode, wrestling with demons, but that's about anyway. The you know, yeah. Ask them how they got the body. They they are, you know, their wrestling career is in part defined. You know, if if they didn't look like that, they wouldn't have had the wrestling careers they had. So you know, but she's she's a lawyer. Yeah, I I. I guess next episode is when we start with, like, the trailer show body positivity. You know, she's, like, you know, kind of happy the, with her new body. And, like, you know, people want to take pictures and she's, like, dating, you know, this whole thing. You know, because I, I feel like that's a big part of the appeal of this thing. Like, you know, basically, like, her body changed in a way that was out of her control. But she finds a way to be happy with it, uh, you know, and and for she ends up being okay with other people being happy with how her body, you know, yeah. I I feel like that's something we really need today. The, there's not enough body positivity. Let's see. There's there's you know for for so long like comic books like I love them I do, but it's kind of ridiculous the the impossible you know un the the unobtainium bodies that we see in there of of just these you know yeah so so i'm really glad that we have a character here that you know and i i have heard some people say but her body isn't that extreme though i hear you i wish they felt that they could but i think they're just worried that people are gonna like i i forget i f i want to ah uh, I'm afraid I forget which YouTuber brought it up, but someone pointed out that, like, the mere existence of women who are not conventionally attractive, you know, in some corners of the internet, some people think that's funny by itself, that they exist, you know, like, the, uh, cringe, cringe fuel, or something, it was called something, you know, and there are a bunch of these where they just collect, like, videos and images of, like, you know, some of it was just, like, overweight women swimming. Like, so what? You know, why Why is that cringe? You know, so, yeah. You know, the the I think that they felt that they couldn't push She-Hulk's body further without people just refusing to, ex to, to even consider the point. You know, what she is, you know... I'm not going to get into it, but yeah, you know, some people find that attractive. She's she's taller and curvier than she is as Jen, but it, yeah, it isn't like, you know, I mean, this episode has Megan Thee Stallion, like a lot of female black, like rappers and other, you know, singers, what have you, have more like, yeah, rounder, curvier bodies than She-Hulk does. But you also have a bunch of people saying, oh, that's that's completely unacceptable. You know, conservatives are freaking out over it. Now, let's see. Wh which is like, it's their body, though. Like, if you want to say that some of the... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to get into it, but I understand why some rap lyrics... You know, you don't want kids hearing them, but that's kind of why, you know, hence the the sticker that's, you know, on, on the... Okay, nobody buys CDs anymore. Um, I don't know. When you buy music to stream, which I, I've done a little, I'm pretty sure they're supposed to say explicit lyrics, you know. Anyway, yeah. It's their bodies. That's what they look like. What What is... What exactly is that you you want them to do just not have their picture taken or appear in video at all it's just it's ridiculous and it it really says something that these conservatives like think you know they see a voluptuous body and like immediately they think oh that's always sexual like 
these women can't just be living their lives normally. They they must always be sex objects because they are curvier than you know, like we we really have a problem with body positivity. I forget I wanna say it was maybe ancient Rome, but it might also have been ancient Greece. One of them at least had like ah crap, or am I mixing up yeah, I it used to be. I've seen like these you know, my, my father has a, a, I want to say it's a painting, although his is like a poster version of the painting. But yeah, of like round curvy women. And back then, when it was painted, that was seen as just healthy. Like this is, these are, this is what a woman looks like who can give birth and, um, Crap, what's it called when you when you provide milk to the baby? Yeah, I think you know what I'm talking. You know, the breastfeed, that's it. They these are women who can breastfeed. I'm not gonna get into like I'm not saying that today you need to be that to go through a pregnancy. You know, part of it is also we have modern medicine. So there are things we can do if anyway. What I'm getting at is the current beauty standards are not some kind of set in stone thing you know we can change them and it would be great if we could get back to you know let's <sighs> yeah i'm just briefly going to point out jordan peterson like had a meltdown over that like let's see it was the sports illustrated cover was given to i want to say it is referred to as a plus size model you know, and I, I don't like to get into whether I find them personally attractive because that's really not the point. But I am just briefly going to say I saw that cover. You really have to have an extremely narrow definition of what beauty is. You know, like I get, like, if you want to say, oh, you know, looks unhealthy, she did not look unhealthy. She, yeah. You know, and that was also, you know, po people pointed out, he forgot, he's supposed, you know, no, no, dude, you're supposed, if you're a conservative, you're supposed to say, that's unhealthy, you know, that's promoting an, a, a, an idea of what women should like, that is just unhealthy, because the way she looks, like, she probably has heart problems, and all this stuff, and no, he just said, I don't find that attractive, and it's like, who asked you, like, was someone, like, you know, desperately searching Twitter and, and looking at everywhere that Jordan Peterson posts, like trying to figure out, does Jordan, does Jordan Peterson find this attractive? I, I have to know, does Jordan Peterson find this attractive? You know, I just, like, what did these conservative guys do before Twitter and Facebook? Like, I, I just, I imagine, like, Jordan Peterson, Jordan Peterson's old enough that he, you know, he was probably really obnoxious even before there was an internet for him to spread the obnoxiousness to a wider audience. I like to picture him just running around to random people on the street, holding up cover and saying, I don't find this attractive. I swear I don't find this attractive. And it's like, calm down. Now, let's see. Yeah, so the the fight scene at the end is enjoyable and we see that the gang try to take her blood and you know, we don't know they just say boss man is going to be angry, you know. Is it Kingpin? Is it the you know, we we know that they're trying to reintegrate and and like it seems like Daredevil is going to show up on the show at some point. You know, it could be the leader. You know, I I really it cuz they brought Abomination back, even the same actor, you know, so it's not impossible, they're not, not everything about that movie is completely removed from, from canon and such. I really hope they get the actor back to play, the poor guy, he keeps being in comic book movies, and it, like, they're always really disliked comic he, he's also in fan stick and that's a bad movie for sure but it wasn't his fault that it was bad and he's he's so much fun in you know incredible hulk like he 
he could just say, we're taking a big chance here, but instead he says, you know, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, as, uh, and, and there's some really great deleted scenes, you know, in, in general, like, I almost, it's one of those things where I don't, I don't think any of the deleted scenes are bad. I kind of wish that they would just give you an option to sh to play the entire movie with all deleted scenes. You know, it would take it from, I think currently it's like 90 minutes, maybe 105. It would take it to like two and a half hours. But, you know, I'm, I'm not saying it should be the only version on the disc. But it, I guess it's possible that maybe the Blu-ray release, but certainly not... You know, I have the DVD back there with, you know, two discs, a lot of special features. Anyway, there are some really great... In, in one of the deleted scenes, he says, I hate the government as much as anyone. Which is, like, that wasn't really what they were saying, dude. But, I mean, I believe you. I'm a little bit more scared of you now than I was before. And I already was. But that's an... Yeah... And, you know, maybe it's someone from, you know, someone working for the Thunderbolts who wants the blood. And I don't know, but I'm guessing that really is Megan Thee Stallion playing over the end credits. And I personally didn't mind the, the cameo. I, I don't know why some people are making a big deal out of it. And the mid credit scene, Jen represents Megan Thee Stallion, and they dance together, which is also something some people really hated. And I, it was it was pretty funny. Like, you know, She Hulk gets really hyped up, and she ends up saying, "I will kill for you, Megan Thee Stallion." And and Megan Thee Stallion's like, "Dial it back, sweetie." <laughs> so I guess Megan Thee Stallion this episode is basically wish fulfillment for the female audience. Great. There's been a ton. There's been tons and tons of visual. Yeah, it, beyond. Yeah, of wish fulfillment for the male audience in the MCU and media in general up to this point. It's about time that the women also get. Yeah, it's one of the great Easter eggs in this episode. You know, one of the reporters asks if it's true that she was rejected by the Avengers, which in the comics she was, but because of loud partying. And, you know, did you get your powers from a mob hit gone wrong? That's what happened in the comics. And the Erase memory spell shows back up after making a pretty big... You know, here, here's like a throwaway. If you haven't watched... I can't believe I'm blanking on the name. No Way Home. If you haven't watched that, you don't know how big of a deal that spell is for the, for the MCU. Now, let's see. Right, and someone... One of the Easter egg people, at least maybe more than one, pointed out that, you know, one of the, like, reporters asked, you know, yeah, like, it, it starts out as a rumor, and then people start acting like it might actually be true, you know, that, I think it was the kicked out by, rejected by the Avengers thing. So, the fourth wall breaks in this episode are commenting on the storytelling, how many cameos there are, that kind of thing. I like them. Some people interpret it as the show criticizing viewers for expecting cameos. I didn't really get that impression at all. Like, it seemed more to me like the character herself is frustrated and not being the star of the show, trying to reassert that she is. I mean, let's be honest. Of all the reasons to comment on how your own show is going, frustration is one of the most understandable. Like, if she's happy with how things are going, she's just gonna let it play out. You know, it's... And I... I yeah, I feel like Hasn't that been the case each time that she's like trying to let's see. So yeah, in the in the first episode, yeah, she's like, look, okay. Yeah, I know, you know, she just told you that I'm technically a Hulk, so uh I'm gonna tell you about the Hulk thing so that we can focus on how this is a lawyer show. You know, like she's it seems to me like the fourth wall breaks is her like trying to control her own narrative and the show kind of rejecting that, you know, and that is like a lot of women are not allowed to live their lives the way that they want to, you know, men and, and media and such are trying to force them into specific, you know, so I, I feel like that's what they're doing. I really don't, I, I yeah, um, I think I'm going to, 
yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it go, but I just, yeah, if you're one of the people who think that the, that the show is yelling at you for your expectations, try to watch the scene again, and try to, try to, try to push that impression away, and try to look at it, and, and see if you're, if it may be, registers as there being possibly some other reason for it because to me it really reads as just her being frustrated with the yeah you know yeah another fourth wall break was in episode two where she you know she has the job as she hulk and she's you know walking and saying i can't believe i you know yeah, yeah she's she's talking about the expectations yeah and you know, yeah, another one in, in this episode was, you know, she said, connecting the A and B stories. Nice. Which, yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I thought it was funny. I, I didn't really think that it was, I mean, at the end of the day, the, the part of, a big part of what this show is, is this young woman trying to control her life and things outside are trying to to force her you know she she was fired because of becoming she hulk now she then she was re you know she was hired at a different place for being she hulk and you know wong screwed up her case but then did come back to fix it you know not not because he like it was what was it her Ah, I can't believe I'm blanking. Uh, paralegal. Her paralegal's thirst trap got his attention, you know. So, yeah, you know, she is, she's trying to make sure, you know, she wants the show that's about her to be good, so she's glad that they connected the A and B story. Yeah. And, let's see. Yeah, other, uh, you know, I'm not the first person to point out, it, Kind of seems like Wong might be lying for Emil. Like, his explanation doesn't really seem to make sense. Like, he says that it was, you know, the, the Sorcerer Supreme, he had to prove that he was, you know, ready to be Sorcerer Supreme. And, you know, yeah, like, he became Sorcerer Supreme was like six years ago, at least five years ago by now on a technicality because strange blip like when dr strange said that in far uh, no way home i forget exactly what wong said but i'm almost certain he didn't dispute that like i'm sorry but if i had to work hard to get a job and someone else was like technicality i'd be like okay just one second here i busted my ass for that job do not go around telling people it's a technicality, you know. So, yeah, I, I feel like, I, I just, I don't know why he would be lying, but I guess we're going to find out down the line. So, yeah, I'm, I, I know almost nothing about Megan Thee Stallion. I know she helped make the WAP song that had Ben Shapiro freaking out at the idea that women other than his wife get sexually aroused. I'm sure there are other reasons why she's a hero to young women, though, but that one ain't bad. But yeah, so let's see. I am going to try to keep okay, predictions for next episode. So yeah, based on this episode, I am actually not entirely sure because the, the thing with Emil was resolved. Right, right. There's going to be the, uh, the fact that she did an interview. There's going to be some kind of, you know, yeah, she's, she's trying to take control of the narrative surrounding her. And that it that leads to, like in real life that leads to stuff that you know women are not allowed to control their own narrative in media today so i am gonna just yeah let's see that was the yeah so this yeah the following episode is going to go into what happens there we go yeah I 
I continue to be very happy with the show. I think they're doing a really great job. I think they have good ideas for, for subjects to, like, I can imagine. I'm, I'm not on social media. It's, if, if it doesn't, if no YouTuber that I'm subscribed to talks about it, I probably don't know about a thing that happened on social media. But I can imagine that a lot of young women were like, thank you, finally, when, for, for the whole trial on, um, you know, Dennis being so clueless, and like, I mean, if it wasn't subversive, if it was just saying people who get catfished are idiots, I would have issue with it. But it's saying, here's a guy who's so clueless he thinks that he could be with Megan Thee Stallion, you know, and, and let's see, who was, I think it was Pug who pointed out you really, th oh wait, no, it was Jen who said, you you actually thought that Megan Thee Stallion drove you know, that kind of car and needed, you know, yeah, all this yeah, it was it was really funny and, yeah, like, I've, when you have a character like that, you obviously, like, if you go too far, you lose the, like, eventually, people are gonna think that you're pushing it too far, and the, the people who always hated that you made fun of a character like that are gonna be like, see, see, this is what they want, so, you know, I hope that they don't, like, I think it would be wrong if, like, Dennis ends up dying and it's supposed to be funny, or, like, you know, I, I think they could, like, if, if, if Titania took him, or wait, is it Titania? Ah, crap. Uh, something like that, you know. Yeah, if, if she, like, takes him captive or something. I think that could be fun. Yeah, and, and then G she Hulk, the female hero, has to save a man. That could be funny, you know. But yeah, so far I don't think they have pushed him too far. I... Let's see, you know, episode one, he is mansplaining about her final statement. And yeah, he's wrong, she's right. And telling her to smile more, which like... She's a lawyer. Lawyers aren't supposed to smile. But he's so, you know, he, he thinks, oh, woman, she has to be smiling. And if she isn't, I should tell her. And then episode two, he's he thinks that she became She-Hulk for selfish reasons. I think she may, I think he accuses of her, nepoti her of nepotism and demands the details of the superior origin story. And... Yeah, and, th and then he has the line, there's a hot chick over there, I'm gonna go talk to it. You know, and, and yeah, here we see that, like, when it comes to women, he is that clueless. He thinks that he could be with Megan Thee Stallion. You know, he's he's a completely average guy. He's not, like, hugely... Ah, what's the word? You know, he's not he's not incredibly talented. He's... He's not rich, you know, yeah, why would, you know, yeah, and, and, yeah, I, I want to, the entire, ah, what was the, what's the word, the entire statement that Jen gives about Dennis on, on the witness stand, you know, it's just so good, and, and Dennis keeps, like, interject, ah, you, you wanted to know, and, and this, yeah. And what was the other thing? There was the... Right. I have tried to stay out of the whole thing about, in episode one, who is right when Jen and Smart Hulk talk about the whole Hulk thing. And she has that excellent monologue. You know, is she out of line? Is he out of line? Are they both out of line? I've tried to stay out of it until I felt that I was completely sure myself 
of where I stand and I can now say that the videos made by Organized Chaos and The Ponderer yeah you know they they say it better than I could and it is let's see it's especially ah uh, I'm gonna real quick find Organized Chaos and it is his video, Angry Joe Calls Out Anti-Woke Commenters, and Ben Shapiro too. That video, he, he does a really great job, you know, going into, yeah, the, yeah. And then there was, I believe Ponderer did two different videos on it. And let's see. Um, let's see. I think, yeah, I think as the the video, we need to talk about that She-Hulk scene. The yeah, that's that's where I stand on it, and yeah. So, I, that is it for this episode and for what I had to say about the other episodes as well. <sighs> yeah, I, I hope that they continue, I, I believe, I, they have my faith. I believe they're going to continue to get humor out of the Dennis character without pushing it too far. That's also, I, I think... Like, if they outright had him, like, let's say, kill someone or something, that would be going too far. Uh, you know, I, I, I mean, certainly it would have to be that he, like, okay, yeah, if he felt humiliated by a woman and attacked her, that I think would still be very credible. But, yeah, you know, I think they're doing a really great job with the the character and I yeah I look forward to uh, honestly when I watched the first episode I did not think we were going to see him again I also didn't expect Pug to be such a big part of this episode after like his appearance in episode two is like a cameo like he shows up and just I, I wasn't sure we were ever going to see him again I just yeah right I wanted to briefly say apparently like Tatia Maslani really loved working with I want to say her name is Ginger Gun Gonzaga uh yes who plays her paralegal Nikki Ramos and like apparently like they the, when they uh was it the audition or something like eventually Tatia Maslani was laughing so much that her face got really red and she you know and ginger was like are you wearing blush and she's like yeah yeah blush it's certainly and i can understand what she mean and they, they are really great together the the yeah you know we we see a little interaction in this episode when they're talking about wong for example and just yeah let's see yeah, I also I wanted to mention about the thirst trap. I thought it was quite good. I I like that they're basically, you know, she says that she she put out a thirst trap to attract Wong's attention, and it turned out to apparently work. So they had the, you know, and and then she said it's a picture of me with a bunch of books, you know, which so so she's you know the the thirst trap thing. You know, it's, it's sometimes seen as this kind of, you know, just, you know, sexualizing of women with, like, as, as I've said in other videos, there's nothing wrong with women sexualizing themselves if that is what they want to do. And obviously, provided it's the right, you know, don't, like, don't do it, when, you know, if you're at work and you're not working as a sex worker or something, you know, but... You know, a number of people see thirst traps as a demeaning, you know, as basically a demeaning way to, which, you know, women expressing their sexuality does not have to be demeaning. 
And I, you know, basically here, she's using a thirst trap to help her friend's legal defense. You know, that's, yeah. So they, the, the thirst trap becomes a, ah, what's the word? Like it's, it's, ah, like she's, yeah, she's using her sexuality to, to, you know, to further her friend's career. And also just this notion of just, you know, it's just her with a bunch of books. So actually, I guess, is that also like, cause he's, he used to be a librarian. So he must be especially turned on by a woman who has a lot of books or is it cause she's, cause they're working as lawyers. Yeah. It might, it might actually be both, but yeah, she is saying that like, she knows that she's so attractive that a picture of her is enough. She doesn't have to, like, put on a bikini or something, you know. So there's also that confidence there. So just, yeah, really love it. Really looking forward to next week. And, yeah, that is all I had for this video. So I will catch you next week.